So for this video I'm going to be showing you how I built my blue bucket uh, seahorse bride tank. Um, these are not my design. These are um, this idea and design I believe came from Dan Underwood um, and there's a video, a really good video on building the standpipe from the Seahorse Whisperer. I know that these videos are used a lot in the commercial trade. These buckets are used a lot in the commercial trade um, for large quantities of seahorse, just significantly larger buckets. Um, I know Alyssa's Savvy Seahorses use similar to these muck buckets, if not them exactly, in her seahorse fry builds. So, I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step walkthrough on the full build because as far as I know I haven't been able to find one that has been um, explicit on all the steps so that you guys can follow along and um, build them if you're going to try and raise some seahorse fry. Alright for today's video I'm going to show you how to make the uh, seahorse fry system using the blue bucket method. So, um, just for starting initial supplies, I just went to Lowe's and got some of these muck buckets. They're 18 gallon muck buckets. The ideal um, tub is actually a 20 gallon koi bowl, but those are not the easiest to come upon and they're significantly more expensive. These are just like a few bucks each. So, um, here's my stand that I built in a previous video, and at the bottom I have a sump that I also built in a previous video. So, um, I'm going to start off doing the return lines. Um, I like to start off by moving myself all the way to one side so I can get as much space on the other side as possible to store anything that I might need to. And I'm going to be installing one inch bulkheads that you can get from <coughs> various sources. And so I'm going to start off by drilling these buckets in the center at the bottom. I've already drilled the stand to have holes in it. So, and I've already did a starter hole when I was lining it up. So, just simply going to drill out the plastic. I decided that really easy to do, especially because it's not super thick plastic. And then, unscrew the bulkhead. You want the gasket on the inside of the bucket. For a one inch bulkhead, which I am using, you want a 50 millimeter uh, hole saw. So that's usually because of glass hole drilling. Um, so that equates to about a two inch drill bit. Yep, and if you just don't know your measurements, you just make it so it fits just on the outside of the threads. And that uh, will fit, make it so it seals up nicely. Um, I 
I bought this whole slot kit and I'm actually using 51 millimeter because that equates to a two inch hole and I have had no problems. amount of spacing. Okay, so now with those bolt kits there, I can use one inch PVC to plumb them straight into the drain. I want to put them on the right side of the drain so that if I want to add a filter sock, I can very simply just by putting them right over there. And since I'm going to be doing this all on a rigid PVC, I'll be um, using red hot glue to glue it all together. I've also had a lot of success using the flex pipe. You just go up from there and make a drain into the sub. But for this build, I'm just going to use rigid PVC because the flex pipe's fairly expensive um, for how much you get compared to just getting PVC from your local home improvement store. So let me get that. couple shorter pieces of one inch PVC to start with. Try to measure some things out and I can get my uh, longer full size pieces if I need to. So when I do uh, my plumbing, I generally try to stick with 45 but because of how little flow I put into these tanks, I have no problem using 90s, even though it does slow down my drain amount. It's not significant with how low of flow that these tanks can handle. So for this leftmost one, I'm going to use a 90 and then straight shot down. So, that things are not in my way, I try to make it so that the pipe is pretty close to the top. Now, so I'll just come down past my bracket here, my support bracket, just a little bit under it, and then over and down. So, so I always like to make sure my uh, pipe is below the surface of the water. That way, um, it's not as loud. And the very last section, I actually won't glue it in. Uh, so that if I do do filter socks, it'll be a lot easier. For me to do my uh, filter stock changes.
So if you notice, there's a lot of la uh, sag. What I'm gonna do is I'll just brace the PVC with a strap so that it stays barely horizontal so it's not putting much torque on my muck bucket because that could cause the seal to break. So this is pretty much the design I'm gonna hook up. Um, if I do add a filter stock later, I'll just cut it here and then add a removable and that will drain to the filter stock. So that's the one. Now for the other one, I'm gonna use a 45 because it's not a very long distance which it has to travel. And then I just gotta go get another piece of PVC. This is just a scrap piece I had around. I'll give me a feel. Probably need something that's about double that. Okay, so I'm gonna go and grab that. Okay, so I just got that last piece, cut it and put it in. And so now I just will glue that together to make it watertight. And my return section is now done. Uh, I still have to do the standpipe in the middle and, or my drain section's done, I'm sorry. And now I have to do my return section and my stand pipe inside the buckets. So, I think I will start off by doing the return section and then I'll move on to the standpipe.